Hello, everybody, and I'm Al and I hold shift out of free once again. I found myself a Canadian. You did, you did, and well, I'm hey. Austin Vision's deal. I'm excited to be here, Alan. It's gonna be a great That's, time tonight. It's great to have you. I wrangled up me a Canadian to talk about Toronto <laughs> and things like that. Of course, right. this is the Diffuse, your CDL post game show here with CMG. Hope you guys have had a wonderful time looking through the games, not just yesterday, but of course today. A lot of games that. Really, I think, uh, well, for me, they were punishing today. I did not have a great day in my prediction game. Uh, but that happens, and that does provide for a very exciting context when we talk about them, obviously, in the post show, which is exactly what we have in front of us here every single day after the events are done. So this is the diffuse. Let's go ahead and light this quick and get this thing started. We're talking about the first matchup that was there, Atlanta versus New York. This is one that uh, before the day started, I was all about this New York team. I thought they looked very solid versus the uh, OGLA yesterday in their matchup. And with Atlanta's question marks, I was hoping that New York would have a good showcase here. Uh, that just would not be the case, though, because it would go another game five visions. Oh. And uh, as the little subtext says, we should just start every Atlanta matchup in a game five, I think. I think we should at this point in time. The amount of times they've went the distance and, uh, you know, went literally to around 11. It's been quite insane. But I think for this series, man, New York came out a little flat. Uh, and we, uh, of course, started watching the series thinking like, man, they are not winning gunfights right now. They're not winning no. the 50-50s. And it seemed like it took them, you know, a good amount of time to really get going. And, uh, you know, they, of course, dropped a couple of the early games. It did bring things back a bit. But there's something about this Atlanta face squad that just has the ability to be able to just go clutch every single time in those game fives. But this is alarming, I think, for New York fans as well as maybe uh, some of the players coming in towards tomorrow. Because if uh, if they don't keep up that same consistency like we've seen them have, you know, from previous turn previous tournaments, um, it, it is a little bit alarming, at least for me, and whether or not they're going to be able to stick with the best competition that we have to offer here, you know, within the CDO. And for me, on top of that, the reason why I'm concerned about New York, I have them pretty high up my power rankings sitting at number five, which now that I'm kind of looking at a different side of the coin here, I'm a little bit maybe cautious about how high up I have them because they're 0-4 versus Atlanta now. They're 0-1 versus Dallas, and they've split the series versus Florida. None of that happening since Awakening was in the roster. Uh, the only top four team they have a win against right now is the Chicago Huntsman, and that happened a while ago. So there are there are some concerns for New York, I think, as you look at them as a whole. But on the opposite side, for Atlanta, you should be feeling really solid about Abizi because we kind of talked about how the SMG line maybe has a little bit of question surrounding it for Atlanta because they weren't performing at the same level they had been at the beginning of the year. Now we're starting to see that ABZ through this set versus a very good New York team. Again, we're not trying to discredit New York. This is a very solid New York team. Sure. ABZ played one of his best series, I think, of the year in this matchup versus New York. Yeah, I absolutely have to agree. And I think uh, a big part of it, uh, you know, came just simply from him being able to, to kind of get himself in towards the mix here. And he found a lot of big multi kills. It was the rotational kills. I, I think he found a groove. I think he found a rhythm. And I there was something so, that was set off the beginning of the year before this entire roster was actually formed from Simp himself, who says, um, you know, like him and Abizi are obviously known as the tiny, uh, tiny terrors themselves. But it feels like Simp always shines a little bit above Abizi. And I think that's something that has just naturally happened through the scene because of all of the, you know, all the hype around Simp himself here from the previous year and his rookie year um but abizi you know shows us like listen guys like i can do the exact same thing and sim talked about that he said listen my duo partner can absolutely go off at any single moment and we saw that today man he played absolutely phenomenal i think it was really good i think it was really important for the community to see that this guy is as talented as he is he's still got it don't sleep on him because at any point in time uh, anybody on this entire roster can absolutely turn it on and well he did that in that series there today for sure my biggest thing though about Atlanta in their front line when you when you look at especially Sympathies and the Tiny Terrors like you mentioned do you feel like this Atlanta team in Respawn has to have both of them play at a high level to win because they've been 50-50 since Minnesota and now here in Paris really when it comes down to their hard points they've lost the last four dominations and that in its own self is concerning for a team that had not lost a domination really in a couple of months. I mean, they're 15 yeah. and eight in the mode overall, but four of those losses have happened now in the last week and a half. This is a team that you think if they could continue to be good at domination, like they were when they were streaking, that could very well be 19 and four. One of the most dominating mode type uh, kind of win records we've had really since like luminosity on control last year at CWL. What is it about this Atlanta team though, that you think is still keeping them from being as dominant in the respawn as a whole compared to where they were before? 
I think it's almost a little bit hard to pinpoint, but it feels like the biggest thing was like when we watched the Atlanta phase of the, the first half of the year, you know, they were one of the best teams at breaking hard points. And uh, and that was something that I think, you know, the community took in and a lot of pro teams took in to, to try and look at and analyze. Um, but it, it almost seems like they're still finding their breaks. They're still finding rotational kills, but it just, they're, they're not soaking up time. And uh, for whatever reason, you know, we had watched over the games today as well. And we were like, okay, well, what's going wrong here at the moment? Because it, it, they're like, they're slaying out like Alan. It's like, if we take the scoreboard off the top, of the screen there should be like 100 points ahead but no yeah. they're actually down by 10 to 15 um it, it just seems to be you know maybe just a problem i think on, on putting enough numbers in towards the actual hill itself and maybe they're too focused on making the movements around the map to try and set up for the next um you know the next spawn that might come through or the next rotation and towards the next hill it's really hard to pinpoint for me but it almost just seems like they're not getting their body on top of the hill and they're not uh, holding on towards setups enough they're you know holding things down for 20 30 seconds and then immediately playing towards the rotation not playing for that scrap time that was something that you touched on yesterday i think that's the exact same factor here for us um, on the day for hard point which is sad to see because every single player you know is so individually talented um it just seems like they're maybe just trying to figure out where that glue goes uh together again here uh with uh, all five players well the good news is they continue to win map five so <laughs> they true. are getting a lot of reps in <laughs> and their map five win ratio goes extra high that ice is definitely being kept cool uh but let's switch over and talk about dallas and florida as i think everyone had their eyes going in today on this matchup again a rematch from last week in the playoffs from the minnesota home series a very good matchup the first time around but one of the things that we're starting to notice about florida is that they continue to not just be good they're getting better through and through this one, the only map that they lost was a two-point loss on the domination on Hackney Yard, where, again, they looked great at the map, trying to really kind of uh, push the limits of the map as far as possible. What can we get away with? They're really trying to extend and stretch some of these plays to really kind of be what I think at one point in time, if we were to look at the map maybe a couple of months ago, we would have thought was greedy. Now mm -hmm. they're trying to find a way to kind of harness that greed and turn it into very successful moments. This time, though, Dallas does kind of keep their legs under them just enough to make sure they don't get came back on. But what we see from them in Search and Destroy, massive improvements from Florida. That was our big concern from last week going into this one was could they be good at Search? Now we found them a 6-4 win versus Paris, a 6-1 win versus Dallas. They stay flawless in the hard point, and yeah, they mm -hmm. lose the domination, but it's by two points. So here, have a couple of pennies. You still won the Series 3-1. Yeah, I think this uh, this Florida management team did an amazing job on scouting out and, and making yeah. the right adjustments here with the players, man, because Awakening... He, I think like, just at the end of the broadcast there, Rich just hit an amazing point saying like, we have not seen this amount of hype around an individual player that's been brought in from the amateur scene, it, it, you know, since Dashy uh, coming in towards the, the competitive play here for us back in towards World War II. So it is, uh, it is honestly an amazing, amazing, astonishing moment to see this player come in and drop the numbers that he does, but it's not just him. Like that's the best part. It's like, all right, even if awakening, you know, doesn't pop off, you know, you still have all these other individuals like skies has been putting up like just the absolute amazing. Crazy his KDs the entire yeah. year man like this guy is one of the best slayers within the league itself and right behind him you had Farrell today like Farrell was popping off in that first match you know I believe he had something along the lines of in towards the 35 kill mark I want to say and he had himself a fantastic entry in towards the game so you have everybody that I think is still in towards this honeymoon phase where they just brought awakening in and last weekend they win an event they go in towards another event just a week later and they're just riding off with this momentum right now man they're feeling good they look good and I think that they are absolutely one of the best teams in the cdl without a doubt and with the intention i would say if, if they win tomorrow that they are the best team in the cdl i think in everyone's mind that kind of runs but speaking of things in people's minds this is a conversation point that actually proper kind of lent towards us when it came down to you know what does it take to kind of be a a hyped up superstar in this league we saw last year sip immediately got into the scene had an incredible outing with the phase black squad immediately into United, where again, you have a very solid middle of the year through the back half of the year, and everyone's throwing a ton of credit his way. We've seen similar things, though. When it comes to players like Skies, who again kind of took the world by storm last year when he got moved down to Luminosity, he kind of took that team over a little bit. And now the same thing here with Awakening. But the question in my mind that kind of still lingers is what does it take? to kind of throw away the superstars of old and become a superstar of new. In Sip's instance, you know, and clarification kind of came through from a number of people in the community that the kid was winning tournaments when he was 15 years old and mm -hmm. smoking pros at the age of 16 plus. 
that's obviously not the case with players like Skies and Awakening. But since they've become professional players, they have done nothing but showcase that they can win, and they can win a lot. And they are very, very individually talented no matter the game they're playing on. So I guess my biggest thing is, what does it take to eventually list yourself or be recognized as a new age superstar in COD? Because right now, whatever you hear the casters, the de- the talent, or the desk as a whole label superstars, they are players that have mostly been in the scene for a long time with really the exception of Dashy, like you mentioned. Yeah, I think what it takes is uh, is a lot of really big individual moments as as a player itself. Like when you see Awakening doing the things like he was doing last weekend, where it's like they post it on, they know the social media, like three piece, like you just, you know, insane break from him, insane hold from him. And yeah. all that hype catches on, right? So I think that like that's like the start of the making is, is being able to to have those superstar plays itself. But it's, uh, you know, I, I think the the next level of it is, is the consistency of it. And I mean, that might just sound a little bit dumbed down, but that's just the simple fact of it. You look at like the very first, big you know original superstars in towards the scene itself scumpy comes to mind he has had you know a crazy stat line across every single call of duty maybe besides world war ii right that's the big thing you look at simp he played well every single tournament last year within black ops 4 for awakening i think you have to continue to do that and well he's on par to do it at the moment because he had himself already i think you know, a pretty high KD game for himself in towards just uh, the overall on today's games. I think yeah, that you have well. to try and roll with that and you have to keep moving with momentum. If you have maybe one bad tournament and you let that build up or you let the community backlash start to play in towards effect, um, then maybe that's how you start to see that kind of stagnate for you when you don't play up towards what you were doing just a little bit earlier on and towards some of the tournaments. So I think you have to continue to see Awakening uh, do what he's doing at the moment. Don't slow down, ride off of the wave that he's currently on. And if he does so, then I think he absolutely can be listening it as the next potential superstar in towards the CDL scene. I, I also wonder, because, you know, Dashy had a lot of hype around him as well he before did, he got he into did. Optic last year. Do you think, and this is just off the top of my head, I've put no extra time into thinking about this except for right sure. now. Do you think that maybe we were a little bit too fast to label Dashy as a superstar, seeing how lackluster he's been going from Black Ops 4 now to this game? It's definitely possible. I mean... Like when you think like, about it, right? Yeah. Optic like, came in and like smoked everybody in yeah. scrims. They smoked out Vegas. Sure, and even sure. when Zuma was filling in at the beginning of the CWL year, Dashy was still carrying that Optic team. Near the end of the year, Dashy did not have to carry that Optic team nearly as much. And now in the Modern Warfare, you even heard it today that Dashy had one of his worst days, period, in Call of Duty yesterday. It just seems like maybe we throw that term around too much. I don't know. I'm thinking about this off the top of my head. I think you're, I think you're right, Alan. You know, it's, I mean, it's a term that everyone, I mean, everyone wants to know who's the next kid up, who's the next superstar, well, who's sure. the next yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Absolutely right. So I think that it, it is thrown around in the mix, maybe just a little bit too much for that simple reason. But on the other hand, you know, I think that Dashy has had a pretty decent performance, like up towards like halfway through the year in the sense that like, if you look at like the first couple of tournaments, like he was the one that was actually putting up, you know, the, the crazy numbers, the good stat lines for himself for the most part and then it seems like things have maybe started to die down i think that's overall just the roster turmoil i think together which of course we'll probably get into what's that a little bit later too uh later tonight sure after as well <laughs> um but i think that's kind of what adds towards his uh his, his little downfall at the moment here within the, the modern warfare season so it makes things a little bit tricky i don't want to mislabel and say that dashy you know was uh was given the superstar title too early because I, I feel like he still has a lot to give us here uh in, in these remaining a couple events that are coming up I totally feel you there. It was just something off the top of the head. Yeah, Let's yeah, talk sure. about uh, Toronto and Optic, and I'm glad that I have a Canadian on board here because yes, I'm sure you've got a <laughs> lot to say about this <laughs> Toronto squad after their performance today. They are able to find themselves a relatively convincing 3-0 against Optic Gaming LA, smoking dead Smoked in up. the Hackney Yard hard point. It's like they didn't even load into the map, and the London Royal Ravens had something to say about that, saying, hey, we didn't even play for the first 60 seconds the last time we played some teams on Hackney Yard, and we still held a closer total uh, on the map itself. Toronto absolutely blew out Optic Gaming, but I will say, medals, if you don't go double positive with the rest of your team, you're costing, brother. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah. costing, obviously. But 250-49, I didn't think we would ever see a day where that would happen. And that video was very short because there was not a lot to clip because it was just Toronto and the very quick three paps. Yeah, I think that's absolutely fair. I mean, if you didn't tune in towards this match, I completely understand because you could have blinked and missed it. It was uh, <laughs> it was an absolute banger, man. Like, as a, as a Toronto fan, I mean, I was screaming in the call, you know, seeing these guys pop up the way they did. And I don't think we have seen 
anything like that like the Never. entire year man like like you go back to to like some old blowouts and maybe you see that against an amateur team but like two cdl teams like slasher like dashy tj like you just go on the list and you're just like what the heck yeah. just happened man I was blown away. I was blown away, but I mean, I was happy at the same time. Like, it was a great scene for Toronto. They had just came in with this new roster with the addition towards Phoenix. And I think that with a little bit of time, this team is going to absolutely move mountains. I think a lot of people are going to sleep on them because, yeah, they're currently at the bottom of the, the leaderboards here within CDL points, but mm -hmm. they can still get a lot of damage done here. They showed us that today. Optic Gaming LA, they got a lot of things to figure out at the moment here for us, but I think Toronto is on the up and up uh, going forward here and towards these next couple events for sure I, i'm yeah i'm glad that you brought up the whole optic thing because at this point in time and rich had hit this during the little bit of the post show during the headquarters was that that honeymoon period clearly over so when it comes to trying to regain and kind of get yourself back into the season is it even possible at this moment you heard them talking about oh roster move this roster move that yeah. how many do you sub out and who do you get you know again we kind of remember the fact that Gunless was maybe a consideration for Optic Gaming, that there were conversations that were happening. They were supposed to happen. There have been some other translations happening saying that, well, maybe it's not worth to pick him up this late in the season. That's my biggest thing is we are so late into the season. They've mm -hmm. only got, what, two more weekends to play, I believe, if I'm not mistaken in that. And that's not good when you're sitting here being absolutely dismantled by a Toronto Ultra team like you mentioned near the bottom of the rankings after of course they win today they're not nearly at that kind of a dire straight but you look at what they have coming up they have the next weekend in new york off they play at london where they have to play up against florida first and then mm -hmm. you've got seattle and london in that pool and then to finish things off before playoffs they'll be at the toronto event where they have to play up against toronto again first <laughs> and they're in a pool versus both chicago and seattle so in my mind Unless you can find a way to beat Toronto in a couple of weeks, you might have two more wins on your belt here if you keep playing like you did today. And that's both against the Seattle Surge team, which is, again, not to discredit them, they're looking better and better since they put Proto into the starting lineup. So this is a tough end of the season. And I honestly don't know if there is a regain potential for Optic after this weekend. Ah, oh, man, like, I don't think there is either, Alan. I'm going to be honest with you. I think that this Optic Gaming LA squad is uh, is in a real tough spot. And I think that the, you know, the force play might be to just simply look at maybe making a roster change. But I don't think that's going to do it because it's a roll of the dice, to, right? To, yeah, it is a roll of the dice. Absolutely. You don't have a whole lot of time to build that chemistry and fix those mistakes. So it's almost like starting scratch in a, in a way, depending on who you're even able to get at the end of the day with contracts and everything, right? So your options might not even really be there. But on top of it, Kenny went to go on to say on Twitter, like, like listen, like, like we have not had like good practice that's come through from day number one. Like this has been a problem for their squad as an entire roster uh, with J cap beforehand with the addition of, of adding in towards Gino. So that scares the absolute hell out of me, man, because if they're not able to just get good practice in from the very start of the season, like, like what the heck is happening? Like, like yeah. I, I mean, they didn't go on to elaborate on what exactly, you know, the, the problems are specifically, but they're, they're not looking good. And uh, I mean, the, the fact that they lose in the way that they get in game number one and then go and fall um, in the series that Toronto all uh, puts them in a real scary spot and whether or not they could regain or not i don't think so i i really think that this team is is going to unfortunately fall off a cliff from here yeah i'm kind of feeling the exact same way i mean it feels well i guess i will say this much i feel like this has to be the roster that has to be the one to make yeah. the improvements and we've heard from day one that players like tj players like dashy might not even want to be on optic gaming la there's the whole kind of whisper about how dashy wish he was playing on chicago or whatever it was but like that in its own right is just it's mind blowing. And that actually is like sour in the mouth to even say out loud. It's like you're playing for the potential of what three hundred million dollars in the line just to get into the league in total, and then beyond that, the winnings are astronomical for the entirety of the year. The prize pool as a whole is large. Plus, the simple fact is, you know, we're going into a year next year where there are a lot of amateur players that are going to be kind of chomping at the bit, trying to get in a number of substitute players that have been chomping at the bit, waiting to get their chance. And if there has been a negative kind of connotation associated with anybody, I, I'm not even going to say specifics because I don't know, but if there is negative connotation assimilated with any of these players in this optic roster that they're not playing, they're not practicing, 
not only are you likely not going to start next year, but who's going to pick you up? Yeah, that's the you know the other thing is that this is this is potentially career hurting at the end of the day. I don't mean to make it sound over dramatic, but I, that is very much so a speculation that could come through beyond just this year as a whole. Whether you're chalking the year or not, I know that the pros have particular opinions on the game itself, but mm -hmm. you got to suck it up and play through it. And we've seen that you know from teams like have we heard any of that from any of the Florida players? I don't think we've heard a single negative thing out there in the social media sphere when it comes to any of the Florida players. And they've gone through some of the most wild changes this year, having to pick up a player because Prasini obviously yep. going through some mental health issues. You have to scout out another amateur because chance isn't working out. It just is one of those things that, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to play the, the hand that you're dealt. And if you're just kind of keep folding the cards every single time, you're not gonna you're not gonna win anything. So yeah, it definitely is a little concerning to hear all that come through, you know, from Kenny's Twitter specifically. They're not practicing at the same level that they play at. I also think like there's a lot of egos on this team at the moment, uh, you know, without a doubt, right? I mean, with the way last year ended with Optic Gaming, you know, and all the oh, yeah. between TJ and Scump, like there, there is a there's a lot for them to want to prove, and they're not having a chance to be able to do it. And on top of it all, like you have Slasher who you know flips his camera off, you know, on on screen here today, after map like, one, after yeah. map one. I mean, I mean, I'd probably be flipping my camera too. I'm not gonna lie, shit, uh, <laughs> it didn't look great, but uh, you know, like that's still like that's that's it's just it's just so scary as like a team that's like supposed to have this really high standard of the cdl and like you have to be able to accept losses and learn from them but it, it just doesn't seem like they're making progress and like if you're not making progress and like that maybe forces you to make a change but again you come up with the point like all right if you do add a change well who do you even have have the ability to be able to get in towards the roster here right and are you going to be able to make those important long strides uh that are you know going to come up very very quickly here for us uh, with all the remaining uh, events and then in towards champs so i think it is so problematic i don't even know like if there's a solution and at the same time Rich also said that like it doesn't even seem like they want to play at the moment alan like it, it almost it, just feels like yeah. <laughs> that lack of of wanting to to play the game and, and to want to improve is not there and how the hell are you supposed to win if you don't have that we noticed that in the domination like near the last two minutes they were just single by single player just going from a to c a yeah. to c a to c and there, it wasn't Brutal. like they were like at all double hitting anything it was just solo challenges in the question marks it just looked like for lack of a better term, it's also kind of a public match or something like a tens lobby or something <laughs> of that nature. Uh, yeah, before sure. we go on, though, again, just as a reminder, all you viewers out there, uh, we are going to be taking your questions at the end of the show. And if you do tweet us your questions with the hashtag diffuse, we will actually give you five CMG credits, free Ooh. credits just for asking good questions. Come on. That seems like a steal, Austin. Yeah, I'm going to take that right there. I tried to put up a question through yesterday, but uh, Alan wasn't having any of it. But either I wasn't way, having it. Make sure, <laughs> make sure <laughs> you guys put your questions through because it might get brought up. And yeah, I mean, who wants, uh, you know, who doesn't want five credits that you might have a chance of being able to go in there and play some tournaments here on the CMG side? the case so make sure you go ahead i think uh cop just put it in or kyle rather just put it in the chat uh to give you the link to the twitter post that initially had that go there respond to it get your question and we'll answer them at the end of the show for you london versus paris battle for europe one that has happened historically and militaristically in the ages this one obviously occurring on a video game but it's a rematch from what they had in the opening launch weekend this time through though london not much cause for concern through this one as Paris didn't put up much of a fight outside of the search and destroy, which they were able to take the round 11 after some major concern because they were up five to one. We've seen Paris full sail that map before. They nearly let that one go again, as there were a number of one V odd man situations that mm -hmm. really should not have been won by London, but they were <laughs> regardless. Uh, but beyond that though, all of the respawns, relatively handled nicely from the side of London. They got the 100 point mark in the first half of the Hackney Yard Dom, which is very difficult to do. But one of the biggest things that we talked about when we were watching this Paris team play and really the entirety uh, of this matchup was that both London and Paris combined were just kind of playing at a slower pace than what we normally assimilate with the, the top teams currently in the CDL. Yeah, this was uh, this was an interesting for me because you come in from you know this uh, Optic Gaming and Toronto Ultra and you're you know, seeing like all these games with Florida up against Dallas and this super fast pace and yeah things just completely slowed down and it seemed like there was a lot of moments where both teams were almost just giving each other handshakes when they were on uh, you know like the, <laughs> the good side right like it's what we talked about like domination hack the yard no flips came through just simply just went down 35 points and we'll flip sides and we'll try to bring it back ourselves and see if we can hold the two play uh, setup but that's just like not the proactive 
effective way uh, to, to win out games. And I think that if anything, it actually hinders and hurts your gameplay because you're going to go up against teams that are running at you, um, you know, like Atlanta phase, um, like Florida mutineers, um, like all these teams that under, have an understanding that you need to play, play very fast pace within this game. And uh, when you don't do that, like you're, you're going to get punished extremely hard. And, uh, and this one just played out, you know, super weird. And you know, we also touched, you know, touched on, on how there's like a little bit of a, almost a play style differential here for some of the players on, on, on both of these squads where one player wants to play super aggressive, super fast. And um, it just seems like the rest of the players are not on the same page. So overall, I, I think that London, um, you know, got themselves what was, uh, you know, a very uh, unexpected win, I think, against Paris Legion. Yeah, Paris, on the other did. hand, I don't know what's going on since the beginning of the year. Everything, everything's, uh, things went online. Yeah, I have not been the same Paris Legion that we saw that made the top four um, at the beginning of the year. They have simply just kind of uh, went completely downhill and they haven't made any roster changes. They haven't made any uh, significant adjustments. So they're just kind of just been in this spot where they've been losing and losing and losing and nothing has been getting any better. Yeah, that's that little cryptic uh, next thing up there, the one and nine and the nine and 30. Mm -hmm. Since things have gone online, they are one in nine in overall matchups, and they are nine and 30 in maps. Yikes. In total, they're <laughs> 30 and 42 in their map win ratio. So yeah. do the math. They were 21 and 12 yeah, before they that, that. They were good. They were good on land. And then things went online, and they can't seem to put things together. The only series they won was versus a very bad Seattle Surge team that it took them five maps to get over in the first place. And I think that was actually a round 11 Surge that mm -hmm. at that point in time, Seattle was still kind of allergic to winning round 11 Surge and Destroys. <laughs> but it's interesting because Paris is one of those other teams, though, that has a pretty deep bench. They have a lot of players that are just kind of sitting around and, you know, what, what comes next? You know, where are we going to go to? Do we play any of these guys kind of coming up? You still have players like Brezzi, who's had a very good run through the amateur scene so far you've yeah. also got phantoms that is another we've seen and heard nothing about this year i would feel and kind of the expectation from the get-go was that brezzy was going to be the face of this team and as someone who played very aggressively very fast paced at black ops 4 that feels like a, a person that you would love to have on this roster right now yeah, think of him adding him in with Kisman at the moment, Alan. Like just, just that's what I'm that, saying. Right? Like, like I just feel like it would it would change the way they play the map like completely because they play too slow. It's not going to work against teams that have understood and learned the game at this point in time. And adding in someone towards the roster, I think, is what they needed. Now, yeah. this is the question you know that I, I kind of pose is like, you no, know, has that window now closed? Like, do you think they could do it here with the amount of time that's left, and then still try to um, you know have everything on the same page? You know, going towards the end of the year, I would kind of. Say yes like what do you have to lose things have not been going great for you and there is uh you know there's no actual certification that we are going to be going on towards land at the end of the year so why not just throw in something that might give you a refresher like you have no idea what it's like for anyone that's not competed you know when you get that new player in you hear that new voice that the new opinions like everything starts to flare up a little bit inside and everyone gets that passion back that might simply be missing because you're seeing the l after l after l i think it's worth the try and you know i, I don't really see too much of a harm in, in, in trying to attempt to do it I'm wondering if it's kind of the same situation like we framed up with like Nasty and the London Royal Ravens where that, because Brezzi is in France, like maybe he doesn't have the ability to get to the States at all. I mean, that could that's very fair. well be the case. But uh, by from watching Brezzi play this year in the, in the amateur path to pro challenger scene, uh, I mean, he is good at this game. <laughs> so he is. Uh, it's one of those things that I don't think that necessarily again, I don't know because we haven't seen Phantoms play at all this year. But Denz is probably the best player on this team occasionally on the day kismet's the best player on this team but consistency wise i think dens is probably the best player on this team so i don't think you make an ar for ar swap but i think brezzy could be a potential option for these guys it just comes down to the obviously the logistics of if that is even feasible at this point in the year uh, sure. my hopes are not high though for paris um when it comes Ooh. to closing this year out it does not look good for them i mean you win one map and it comes in around 11 where again you should have won that map probably five to two five to th or six to two six to three something like that and a little bit of a rough go of it there near the end but uh skipping ahead we've got more things to talk about toronto which i'm sure you love uh, so as they were facing <laughs> up against new york another strong showcase from this toronto squad as they take the ramaza in the first but then from there new york hit the jets and don't let toronto come back 
really, again, not really a chance for them in the search and destroy, but they kind of halt Toronto in the domination and then don't fully give up the gun runner hard point to close out the series three to one. It was another kind of tough series though for medals. Although I will say overall medals has been, I would say more consistent than I think he was kind of uh, given credit for at the beginning of the year when he was subbed out for one week and then came right back in. Uh, but at the end of the day, this Toronto team obviously is still showcasing, like you mentioned, this is a solid, super solid point that, this is a squad that I think with some good practice, they can clean up some of their mishaps and they can beat teams like New York in the future. Yeah. I think that they absolutely, you know, are going to be able to do this by the end of the year. I really do think that uh, Toronto ultra is going to be the sleeper team uh, heading in towards uh, champs um, in the end where they're probably going to be fighting back from the losers bracket. Um, but you know, that's where they've been almost a good amount of their game so far in the year itself. And they've uh, been able to make some big appearances, you know, in towards the top four, uh, being able to try to make, uh, you know, those those big, um, you know, big spots in towards the mix of the top teams. And I think that they do have it in them. What comes down to this series, I think for me was uh, they, they came off the very first map one on Ramaza super hot, but it was off the back end of Kleenex going on that 10 yes. spring that you saw earlier on and towards this clip. And then everything turned around and then they lost the search and destroys, which was off the back end of accuracy actually playing really good today and i say that really with did. like the way i do because like i mean there has been a lot of shade thrown at accuracy not that i'm trying uh to throw any his way but he has just simply not been performing i think uh to the level that everybody expects him to and he is not one of the most dominant ars in uh in the scene out of everybody in the mix that is you know a fact and uh him That's being able to i think come out and show uh himself a strong ramaza search and destroy definitely gave me a little bit of uh you know breathing room on how far he might be able to kind of push himself here heading in towards these last couple of events um and off the back end i think that uh, this whole team is starting to mesh together like they add in mac and since they've added in mac they have looked a lot better um in towards um all of their games all together i think that when you add in mac with the aggressive attach and zuma um off the back end of accuracy who doesn't like to move a whole lot likes to play that kind of statue uh passive role it fits the team really well and, I, and now that i think that they have some practice built in uh, to uh, to their other uh, selves and their team. I think that they are now starting to to show us exactly what that's leading up to. And well, they got themselves towards the top four here uh, heading in towards tomorrow. So I think that it's definitely paid off for them. And they do look like uh, a team that is definitely near the top of the rankings here for us within the CDL. I think it's one of those things that, you know, I'm interested to kind of hear your thoughts on this as well, because now we've seen sure. kind of the revolving door come to a small pause as far as this roster goes. Is this new five, the best five that Toronto could put on the field? No, I don't think it is. I don't think it's the oh, best okay. mechanically. Mechanically. Mechanically, okay. no. I think Brack is still uh, a big tool on the bench that has not been used since the beginning of the year. And I think that he's someone that adds in um, a lot, at least stat-wise, mechanical-wise. But the problem with Brack is that the vibes weren't there, and that was the reason why he had actually gotten benched. So I don't think that it's the best five that they could absolutely possibly produce, but I think that this is going to be the most consistent five, and I think that this is going to be the, the best five that meshes together, I think is actually the best way to kind of say it. Um, because everybody is, is super hungry. Kleenex comes off the bench, looks really good. The remaining four players that have been on the roster have already been you know, performing pretty well, at least uh, up towards this point they've just been looking to find those little breakthroughs i think with the addition towards Kleenex, they will be able to do that but the best five i still think that brack is uh is a tool that's not being utilized and will be picked up next year as i don't think he's going to get play here uh, for the remaining of the season my whole thing when i was looking at this roster is i'm sold on three parts of it now i'm sold on cammy have been really since weekend number one Me too. i'm sold on medals since he played well at minnesota got benched came back played well didn't have the greatest series here against New York, but I still think he's a good addition to this roster. And I think Kleenex is 100% one of those core three. I am not still sold on Bance, although he played much better in the respawn today than he, he had in the last couple of weekends. Major credit because Bance was a huge problem on the map today. But at the same point, I think one of the weakest points of this Toronto Ultra team, and we've seen that in instance because Looney was their main AR. Now mm -hmm. Methods is essentially their main AR. As much as I want to see Brack in this roster, I just don't know if he fills Bance's role better than Bance, and I don't know if he fills Methods' role better than Methods currently does. 
I would say, though, that overall, when you look at main AR to main AR across the teams that are sitting in the middle of the pack, and of course, the ones that are up top, that's where I think this Toronto Ultra squad is the weakest. I just don't know if there's a better option for them, because I do like Methods than I more than I saw from Looney. Looney was playing way too slow, and Methods does get involved a lot more often, and is usually a catalyst for a lot of big rotations, especially on domination for this squad. Sure. But I just... I feel like this five is probably the five you're going to go with. I I would love to see Brack play again. I still think it's a huge missed opportunity that Toronto didn't put the investment into sending their other five, or at least two of their other five into the path to pro big whoopsie right there. But on the backside of that, I just don't think that there is another player that we've seen so far this year that fills this current rosters role better than they do. That was just kind of like a, whoopsie doopsie kind of way of kind of explaining that but uh i feel like this five is probably the five that you need to stick with from here on out if you're toronto if you want to have a chance at breaking past the top eight and trying to make some waves before playoffs yeah i think it's the one you stick with at this point in time the, there is really if you if you're just putting in a new roster change now then that's because you know one player has completely went off into the deep end or is <laughs> right, you know, yeah. it's, it's just going, you know what i mean <laughs> something's going on behind the scenes that's not being said uh, on social media that's for sure so i i do agree that i think that it's the five you stick with not the best five I, again that i that i think they could put together within this 10-man roster but uh I, I still have a lot of belief here you know from uh from from toronto being the resident canadian i gotta i gotta believe in these guys whether or not they put a different five together or not i'm still gonna believe in them and cheer for them so trust I just me i, the I realized that quickly <laughs> you today can hear, you can hear the call that's right your, your <laughs> i wish i was that passionate call. about any specific team but i don't really have an identity with any team so it's a little (laughs) bit tough for me out here uh let's talk london and dallas this was our final matchup of the evening and it came with a little bit of interest in the search and destroy as there was obviously a little bit of a replay from round 10 on but the match results were exactly the same it was a very convincing hard point a very convincing domination obviously a little things here or there in the search and destroy but this is a london team that was the heavy underdog and had played well in the search and destroy previously versus Dallas. So it's not a a unusual sight to see this go 10 plus rounds versus these two squads. My biggest thing though, as far as this matchup, you know, this is the heavy favorite in Dallas versus the underdog in London where Dallas again has to fight their way through the losers bracket. Mm -hmm. Are you still convinced that this Dallas team is a top three team in the league after what you saw today? Or do you need to see more? I think I need to see a little bit more. I need to see more consistency um, from. I'd <laughs> say so you're just in the background. He's about the back. Go figure, end. our producer, the biggest uh, Dallas he's, fan. He's a in the Dallas world. fan. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if you didn't know, but now you do. Um, I think that they just. I just need to see a little bit more from them right now. I mean, I, I'm a big Cloyster fan. Like I have a lot of belief in in every every single one of these players here. I just need to see a little bit more. Um, like from the Sun Machine Guns in particular. Like I think that Illy looks great in Search and Destroy, but he hasn't been consistent for me in the kill department. Not that it's all about kills, because he's been doing a good job of collecting the time for his squad, letting his teammates lay around him. Um, but I, I think that you know Shotzi came off of a, a little bit of a tough. Um, you know, day number one uh, looked a lot better day number two, I will say, but I need to see them really, I think, shine tomorrow. And if they can get past, um, you know, some of these top teams like Florida, like FaZe now, um, you know, if we see future here, the matchup against uh, the Huntsman, and uh, I think that those will be kind of like the big matches that I put a lot of weight on. I think London was just a warm up match for them. I, I mean, anybody, I, I think, really expected them to be able to come out on top here pretty dominantly. I think it was important for them to be able to win dominantly, but I, I think that the squad is is uh it's gonna show has to show me individually just a little bit more that they're still at that top two level uh because i don't think that they're there at the moment and uh and i think that's just a little bit uh, alarming at least at the moment here for me on the other side I- i'm prone to agree with you by the way mm-hmm. i still need to think i need to see a little bit more from dallas overall i think that the immediacy of who's rookie of the year everyone responded Shotzi I think that is now ooh, maybe yeah. someone else right and <laughs> you know sure. who's who's MVP you know ooh, maybe not someone from Dallas like there is you know a little bit of second guessing I think kind of being strung through a lot of people's minds after seeing how they've fared against both Florida and now Atlanta as they'll get a chance to rematch against them here but on the other side and I didn't realize this until we had a chance to watch the power rankings video that the uh, CDL team had put together. They had London super high up the number five team overall, I think on their power rankings, how much of a hit does London take after losing to Dallas now twice and beating a pretty poor Paris team earlier in the day in your mind? Oh, I, (laughs) so I think they go down a few rankings, two, three, for sure. Um, 
And honestly, I'll, I'll be gone. I'll, I mean, I've never been sold on this, this London team. I think this entire year, really, for me, like I think they've had some ups, um, but it's it's really it, there's been no consistency there. I, I think that there's um, if this roster had nasty on it, we talked about this earlier in tour today. I think that this would be yeah. a totally different team, and I think that's what they need. They they played too slow for me, man. Like Dylan um, had a great performance as well. He actually really showed up after a lackluster a couple of events in a row. He's not been performing. He's not been the same Dylan from Black Ops Four that everybody talked about and everybody had seen um i i need to see like somebody come in towards this roster that helps them move together as a team a little bit better because they are just two different play style teammates that 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 just do not mesh well i i don't think they mesh well i think shawnee is too slow when he's playing the sub i think that dylan is wants to be constantly up in the face of opponents but never really has the the backup and reinforcements to be able to play that type of style that he maybe is is wanting to try and implement in towards their play style itself and uh and still I, it just doesn't seem like they've been able to take down the top teams for me so i, I knocked them down a couple of pegs for sure um coming into at least my personal rankings out here with the top 12 i'm the same way when it comes to the play style concerns as a whole because like you had said it, it really does feel like dylan wants to play this game like he's got a grapple on his belt like he did in yeah. black ops 4 that was a kind of a comment that we heard from weeks ago that the casters had made <laughs> and it's so true dylan wants to get up he wants to get forward but how many times did we see even versus paris earlier today that when dylan goes for those plays there's no one even close to being in the world of trading out his death anywhere near it and i that's the biggest thing that I think, you know, there was that talk about when New York had zero that, you know, he was playing at a different speed than like where Attach and Zuma wanted to play. He's kind of a slow, methodical guy. I think Nameless even used those two adjectives specifically to talk about zero, but he's got a lot of game knowledge, but he's not one to get his hands dirty and get into the fray all that often. When you've got somebody like him and Shawnee, who again kind of fits closer towards zero on the spectrum that he does towards Dylan it becomes very difficult when it essentially feels like you're playing 4v5 on the map. Not because sure. anyone's particularly underperforming, but even if Dylan is going for an aggressive play, if his team isn't there to follow up behind it with how wonky the spawns are in this game, especially on respawn, you're not going to be able to take advantage of those moments where Dylan does have big plays like we saw earlier today when he was playing up against this Dallas team. He was taking over some maps at points in time. But where was the rest of his squad to follow up? They were nowhere to be found. And that's my biggest thing. And that's why I always say that it, I think Nasty fits the role that Shawnee's currently playing at a much higher level. You know, watching him play for Team War before and watching him play now with what is essentially the Royal Ravens uh, Academy squad. He just fits that play style like an Awakening does, like a Pharaoh yes, does, where if you need yes. him to pull out an AR, you'll pull out an AR. If, but mostly he's going to run around with an SMG and he's not <laughs> afraid to get up into the fight. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, some of the best players in the game are flex players, right? And, uh, yeah, and that's, same, what nasty, that's what Nasty brings, right? Like, you look at RCDs, like, one of the best flex players absolutely comes from Black Ops 4. That's the same thing within this game. Uh, Farrell, another great example that you talk about. That's what this team is is, yes. is just missing. And, uh, I, you know, that's obviously not going to get fixed. Nasty has visa, is visa issues, so he's not going to likely get on towards this uh, this team in time. So they might just simply look to try and ride things out and uh, and try to hope to God that it comes together. And uh, it's it's not going to work. I really don't think this team's going to going to work out. They're not going to be happy with their end performance. But I mean, what <laughs> what can you really do? They have all have different I, play I, styles, I right? Like they, there's there's just about nothing you can throw in that's going to I think fix things up for them. On my mind, if I were to make a change, if you're an SMG player, you got to keep up with Dylan. You don't want to slow Dylan down. Not no, in the state of this no. game, and not based on what we saw versus Paris, where again it was very polite very hi how are you we'll have the two mm -hmm. flags this time you have them next time let's see who wins the game <laughs> shall we it was very much so a very cordial game of domination even in their their hard points i mean we saw you know kind of that come to be you know it just came down to when it when they played up against this dallas squad they were just getting completely out tempoed and out rotated um but we of course have our final four teams a little different than we may have expected yesterday i had a hot take did not go so well. I said I was going to play this clip live on stream. So, well, we have to make fun of me now. And here was that moment from yesterday. New York, New York beats, beats Atlanta. Atlanta. Florida beats You're Dallas. So Dallas, Dallas beats, beats London, London to get in. So, so Florida, Florida and Dallas from Group A, New York from Group B, Optic, Optic Gaming beats, beats Atlanta, Atlanta and, and Toronto, Toronto to get into the playoffs. You have the most blasted takes on the diffuse. Like, I don't understand. You I sometimes. can see it happen. <sighs>
Wouldn't you know oh, it? Optic wow. finishes oh, top wow. eight. They get DFR. I'm incredible. To be fair, Maven also picked Optic Gaming to get into the playoffs. So that doesn't help you at all. All right, Alan. No. I don't, you're, there's it. no recovery from this <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, I, I think it was far fetched, but uh, I mean, now, I mean, I kind of asked the question. You know, does Optic Gaming even ever have that kind of run? You know, going forward, you ever bet on them to be able to do something like that again? Because I, I don't tonight, think you can. You can't, right? <laughs> you can never again do that. So. Alan learns. That's what he. That's, that that's what we got through tonight. As uh, he took the blast and take didn't work out. But I mean, I respect the, the 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 attempt. You know, it just didn't happen out this time. But there could be one tonight that you could end up, you know, coming through with. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Don't you put that evil on me. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I think that this makes for a real a real interesting spot with our last four here, Alan. Like I, you, I do you too. look at. Three teams. I, I think I'm, I'm sorry for any New York fans, but I don't think New York is going to be the team that takes this event. Maybe they surprise me and completely pop off and do it, but I don't think that's the case. But there is three teams that likely could all actually have a chance at, at taking that third title and, and being the most winningest team so far within the Modern Warfare CDL season. Um, I personally think that it's going to be Florida. I think Florida is going to come ahead. They're riding on a wave. They have the last event that's already been secured for them with awakening awakening looks great he looks great today Farrell looked great today everybody seemed to be on the same page that's going to sell me on it they're going to win against new york 3-0 or 3-1 they're going to go in the finals and then they're going to play up against atlanta phase where they're going to shut them down here once again in the finals for me i agree with you that it's a little far-fetched to think that new york could surprise florida but i would say it's even more of a stretch to think that they surprise florida and surprise a dallas sure. or an atlanta in this one but for the opposite side, Atlanta versus Dallas, I'm still not fully convinced that this Atlanta team has fixed their problems in respawn. They have not won a domination yeah. in the last four attempts. One of those was unfortunately obviously against Florida, but they did end up beating Dallas in one of those dominations. They're going to have to win that map again if Atlanta wants to get through. The thing about it is when Dallas gets rolling, you get to hear their listenings when they're usually ahead. Their calls are clean, concise, and they know exactly what they want to do. I've got Dallas coming out and having a hot start versus Atlanta, and that momentum will roll them through to probably a game five. But the luck of Atlanta phase <laughs> in their game five is no. going to come to an end tomorrow. I'm calling it. And then past that, Florida takes the finals 3 1. Listen, you're only saying that because the community is saying that. They're like, they're running out of no, luck. There's I'm only so it many. Because I there's, believe it. There's only so many game fives they can win. Listen, they have so much experience in game fives. I also want to see them. I mean, I'm sorry. I want to see them lose a game five. They, like, they have beat Toronto in so many game, like game fives, round 11s, round 10s. But that's Toronto. Like, Listen here, Alan. All right. I don't want to hear it right now. All right. You're OGLA. Yeah. They're gone till who knows when next year. So, <laughs> so, so I, I don't think that, uh, I, I don't think that they're going to fall short to Dallas. I think they're going to come out on top and, uh, I don't know if they're going to fix their, their response in time, to be honest, but I think they've looked good enough in search and destroys for me, um, to be able to win it out. And I think there's a lot of good veto maps that you can actually put up against Dallas. Um, that will kind of shorten them and, and and be allowed to do what they're they want to be able to do, and I think in a lot of a, a lot of maps. And if Shotzi doesn't perform and has a pop off event, then I don't think they're going to be able to beat them. I mean, that's the X factor for me. When when they were playing their best, when they were winning events, it was off the back end of Shotzi. Then the top came up, the new superstar, the player that just came in towards the mix, the man that is going to be the rookie of the year. All of this, all of this talk, and now we question it because of Awakening coming in, Shotzi slowing down. The hype is now, I think, um, in the in the side of of awakening himself who's starting to ride with that and uh, i think because of that dallas is importantly going to fall short in a game five and uh, i might go to a round 11 might not but either way phase will clutch it up i uh, okay we'll see what happens we'll just have to <laughs> wait and see what happens Absolutely. i think the map pool to go over tomorrow is actually going to favor dallas i think atlanta we'll is a little bit too one-dimensional when it comes to what they're playing right now in hard points so uh, I think that if they could just find a way to take that domination, I think Dallas is going to find a way to win the series. Uh, viewer questions. Do we have any today is the question really for me as we take a look. Not really. Although we'll just give this one to Paradox because it's funny. When will J pros have more than 70% correct on his predictions? The answer is going to be never because he's never. like me. We're, <laughs> we're always blasted. That's just the way it goes. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know if I got anyone for my man J pros, but yeah, I don't think that's unfortunately going to happen for him, but 
who knows? Maybe he'll maybe he'll try and uh, take some blasts and takes. Maybe he'll take a little trick from my book here. You know, who's got uh, some pretty good correct guesses going in towards yeah, some yeah, of these okay. championship Sundays. You know, yeah, yeah. That's God, right. I can't <laughs> deal with you. Let's get off this show. <laughs> We're gonna say farewell for now. We will not be back though tomorrow, as we've had some other requirements coming forward. But we will be back on Monday evening to talk about everything that wrapped up here with the Paris homestand. And of course, get ourselves uh, set up for the next one around, which if you're paying attention, you're going to be excited about. It's going to be a fun one. It's New York. That's going to be up the next time around. We'll have Atlanta. We'll have Chicago. And they will be unfortunately on opposite sides of the bracket. So who knows if we're actually going to see these guys play each other again or at all for that matter. So there's a lot to frame up for that one. You're not going to want to miss it. And of course, if you missed any of this show, you can catch it on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, you can catch the show live on Fridays, Saturdays, and Mondays on our Twitch account. That's going to do it for us, though, this time around. Don't fizzle out there, friends. Catch you back next time for the Diffuse on Monday evening. So long.